On today's Winning Cures Everything, it's week 13, Rivalry Week. That's right, Thanksgiving. We got a lot of things to be thankful about, uh, or thankful for. But first, let's just go on and get into this thing. Can you believe it? It's football. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. Welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. I am your host, Gary Seegers, and it is the Thanksgiving edition of our Picks Show. Uh, my apologies. I'll go ahead and say that right off the bat. Oh, I'm your host, Gary Seegers. You can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at GaryWCE. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at Winning Cures. That is the show's page, uh, but it's also mine right now until Twitter gives me back my account that they suspended for some reason. But regardless, uh, my apologies. We did not have a reaction show. We did not have a preview show. My wife uh, had strep throat, which... You know, most people get strep, and it's not that big of a deal. And whatever this strain is, I mean, it knocked her off her feet for like three days. Uh, So I was dealing with the newborn. I was coming back from Tuscaloosa on Saturday. Just just a lot, a lot going on. Uh, But I did want to make sure that we got a pick show out, right? Uh, Don't forget, of course, you want my official plays. You can find those on the BetUS College Football Show every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time next week. Uh, We will have two shows, Army-Navy week. We're only going to have one, but we will do some early look-aheads to the college football playoff games, uh, along with, I think, some bigger bowl games and whatnot. So all the way through the national championship game, we are going to have picks and predictions and breakdowns, et cetera, over there. So make sure that you are subscribed. There's a link in the description for that. Um, The Three Dog Thursday. Every Thursday, I believe we're going to have it out again on Thursday. If not, it, we might do it on Wednesday. We'll see. This show is coming out on Wednesday uh, after the Bet US show. I'm recording on Tuesday night late. I mean, it's damn near midnight right now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, lots, lots to go over, of course. Uh, but, yes, the Bet US College Football Show, Three Dog Thursday. Uh, if you want to support the show, obviously you can become a member here. Uh, members get to see the videos early. And um, and if you'd rather do it some other way, if you want to see my weekly projections and whatnot, you can do that over at buymeacoffee.com slash winning cures. Uh, that, uh, that would help me out. I would appreciate that. You guys are fantastic for, uh, for being a part of that already. All right. Let's not waste a bunch of time. Let's, uh, let's go on and dive into this. My record last week was terrible. I don't remember exactly what it is. I've got it down here somewhere. I'm going to have the spreadsheet updated uh, before Thursday. So, we will have it there. You can click the link in the description. You can go and check that out. Uh, I'll have the last two weeks updated, uh, input, all that kind of stuff over there. Uh, Last week was a bloodbath, just across the board. I mean, it was so bad, so bad. But we don't quit. We just keep rolling this thing. Uh, We've had a lot of success this year. We are going to uh, to keep rolling. So, uh, we're already three and a half minutes into this thing. Why don't we go on and get started? We will begin... On Friday morning, that's right, Miami heads to Boston College. Boston College, an eight-and-a-half point home underdog total is 48. Uh, It's going to be 11 a.m. Central Time, God's Time Zone, on ABC. And let's go on and pull up the numbers here. Full season numbers like Miami by uh, 12-and-a-half or so. Uh, Power rating likes Miami by 17 And if you look at the last four weeks, the stats-based model over the last four weeks likes Miami by a point and a half. Miami put up a fight against Louisville last week. They should absolutely cover this line. But, but, Boston College at home, it's going to be cold. Miami, not a lot left to play for. Um, They're coming off of two massive games against top 10 teams. Florida State, they put up a fight. Louisville, they put up a fight. How much is left in the tank? I don't know, but I know this. I do not trust them uh, to be laying more than a touchdown here. I think Boston College, this is a game that they will get up for. 
I don't believe Miami will. We can look at some of the numbers, right? Miami's defense pretty good against the rush. That's basically all Boston College has got going for it. Number 43 PPA per rush uh, over the last four weeks. Miami's defense is number 27. Rushing success rate, Boston College number 15. Miami's defense number 40. And you start to dive into some of the other things, offensive line yards, stuff rate, etc. Miami's defense significantly better in those. Uh, but you start looking at like third down conversions and fourth down conversions, all that kind of stuff. Uh, these two teams pretty even. Uh, Miami's defense really good at stopping them. Boston College really good at converting. On the other side, Miami's offense has just been atrocious. Uh, you see the number up here. It's number 119 PPA per drive. PPA is uh, predicted points added per drive on offense. Uh, they are not good. And this Boston College defense has surprisingly gotten quite a bit better. Number 58 in defensive success rate allowed. Number 47 in uh defensive PPA per drive allowed. So uh, what, what does Miami like to do the most? Well, they've been throwing the ball significantly more. A lot of that has to do with the fact that they have been down in some of these games, but they're not great at throwing it. And Boston College is actually pretty good at defending the pass. Now, teams are only throwing on Boston College like 40% of the time. So that could have something to do with the fact that, you know, the number 33 in passing success rate, et cetera. Uh, but you can, you can run on Boston College. The issue is Miami has not been good running the ball either. Number 96 PPA per rush, number 95 rushing success rate. Excusez-moi. Uh, I've got a bit of a cough, so you'll have to excuse me. Um, there are... Boston College is number 10 in scoring opportunities allowed per game. I find that interesting. They don't allow teams to get into... Uh, their side of the field very often. But when they do, uh, they're number 103 in points per scoring opportunity allowed. The issue for Miami is they're number 109 in points per scoring opportunity. 3.15 points per trip inside the opponent's 40-yard line. That is not going to get it done. I Yes, Miami, way more talented, etc. I think Boston College fights more. Uh, give me BC plus the eight and a half on that one. I like the Eagles. I like what Jeff Affley's got right now. This is a team I did not expect a lot from, but I think they're going to be fighting in this situation. Is Miami really going to want to be there with it being so cold and whatnot? I doubt it. And so give me BC plus the eight and a half. And we move along. Toledo heads to Central Michigan. Central Michigan, a ten and a half point home dog. A total of 55 on this one. And... Let's go on and pull up the numbers. Let's see what we got. Full season would have Toledo favored by about 18 points. Uh, power rating has Toledo by 17.6, so about 17.5 points. Um, Toledo has already wrapped up their spot in the MAC title game. They have already wrapped up a 10-win season. They are coming off of a last-second victory uh, in a huge rivalry game against Bowling Green, over over the full season, obviously, the numbers are significantly better. I mean, you, you're not going to see a bigger difference between two teams than number 13 in predicted points added margin and number 128. However, you look over the last four weeks, and, you know, Toledo is still really good, number six. Uh, Central Michigan has improved a bit, number 99 in PPA margin. Let's, uh, let's pull up the full screen here. At Toledo minus 20 and a half. Um, Central Michigan has not been good. I will say that. But over, over the last four weeks, the stats-based model would have Toledo by 20 and a half. And here's the thing. Toledo's defense is fantastic. I mean, they're number nine PPA per drive allowed over the past four weeks. Some of that has to do with who they've played. Uh, Central Michigan's defense can't stop anybody. Uh, but here's the thing. Again, Toledo, Jason Candle, you know, trying to get in on some of these coaching searches. Uh, you've also got the fact that they're, they've got a track record of blowing games that they shouldn't. And I think that that is shown in the line here. Central Michigan needs this to go to a bowl game. There's, there's really no rhyme or reason as to why you would take Central Michigan here. But I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, there's, there's no number that supports it, right? There's no number that supports this other than Jason Candle's track record of you know, being a favorite, a double-digit favorite against MAC teams, especially in a situation where there's nothing to play for other than, 
you know, here's the thing. Toledo didn't make it into this week's uh, CFP Top 25. Again, I'm doing this on Tuesday night, so I just saw it. They were ranked last week. Close win over Bowling Green last week, and it wasn't enough to keep them in. They're not going to get the New Year's Six invitation. So, if you're not going to get that, you're already looking for other jobs. This one's a road game at Central Michigan. I mean, 10.5 is... It's way less than what the number should be. You're already taking a haircut on this thing. However, I think Central Michigan fights in this game, finds a way to keep it close. Again, numbers would say otherwise, but I'm going to go against the numbers. Give me Central Michigan plus the 10.5 situational spot for me on that one. We move to the SEC. And at 3 p.m. Central Time on CBS, Missouri heads to Arkansas. Arkansas an 8 Point home dog total of 54 and a half on this one and again we will look at the numbers uh full season would have missouri favored by 1.67 look arkansas not as bad as their record would indicate a lot of one score games etc they did have a couple of games here one against auburn at home one against uh mississippi state at home where they just looked like they did not want to be there. Uh, from all that I have heard, everybody on that team is excited that Sam Pittman is coming back again next year. They tend to fight for this guy for the most part. I I don't fully get it, I guess. But... Alas, here we are. Uh, Number 29 PPA margin for Missouri, number 53 for Arkansas. The offensive numbers obviously not great for the full season. Uh, Defense, though, actually pretty good. They, I think they'll be able to put up a fight uh, against this Missouri offense. Missouri, you know, we know that Eli Drinkwitz does not like Arkansas, right? But he, if if given the chance, you would think that he would try and run it up on the Hogs. I don't think he's going to get the opportunity. Uh, The last two Missouri wins over Arkansas were both at home, and they were by two points each. So this one on the road, eh, we'll see. Last game of the year, Arkansas is not going bowling. This will be the Super Bowl effort for the Hogs. Uh, Typically, knowing Eli's disdain for Arkansas, uh, I, I would ride Missouri, but... You know, over the last four weeks, you look at this, and Missouri minus 1.09. Uh, it's got them favored 24 to, or 24.36 to 23.27. We'll pull up the, the full numbers here so you can see those. Uh, Missouri's defense, better against the run than they are against the pass. You know, I think K.J. Jefferson's going to be able to run a little bit. Uh, the Hogs have got some, some guys out on offense, et cetera, but I, I still think... They're going to be able to put up a fight here. I just think it's too many points. Uh, I know it's crazy, right? Uh, This Missouri offense, number 35 PPA per pass, number 14 uh, passing success rate, they, I think, will have some success against this Arkansas defense, which is number 79 in PPA allowed per pass. Um, But uh, as far as running the ball, like uh, Cody Schrader, uh, he is, I mean, he's fantastic. Number 19 PPA per rush. Over the past four weeks, number 19 rushing success rate. Arkansas is number 30 in PPA per rush allowed uh, and number 93 in rushing success rate allowed. They don't allow explosive runs, so that's something to pay attention to on this. Um, Neither of these teams great as far as net explosiveness. Um, Arkansas number 95, Missouri number 111 over the last four weeks. I, I mean, the five factors certainly, certainly go towards Missouri here. Uh, five factors plus talent. Arkansas is number 85. Missouri is number 20. But I, I get the feeling, again, that Arkansas is going to... Um, I think they're going to show up here for Sam Pittman. I think they're going to fight. Uh, so give me Arkansas plus the eight on this one. I uh, I think it's too many points. I, just, I, I don't think that Missouri is in a situation where they're going to be blowing this team out. Moving along. And I got to pick up the pace. I got to be faster on these. Penn State heads to Michigan State, and it's not at Michigan State. They're not going to East Lansing. They're going to Detroit. They're going to Ford Field. Weird. 
But it's Friday night, 6.30 p.m. Central Time on NBC. And, yeah, this is part of that weird Big Ten uh, TV deal, whatever. Michigan State, a 21-point dog, total of 42.5 on this one. And, uh, and the numbers uh, do not like Michigan State whatsoever. Full season, Penn State would be favored by about 29 points here. Uh, this Penn State defense is awesome. They are so awesome. Uh, Michigan State, one of the worst offenses in the entire country over the full season. They are number 130 in predicted points added per drive, number 129 in PPA per play, number 112 in offensive success rate. I mean, this offense is going to be able to do next to nothing against this defense. Rutgers last week, uh, these Rutgers and Michigan State are pretty similar. Rutgers beat them 27-24. to 24. Penn State beat Rutgers last week with basically no offense and beat them 27 to 6, right? So that may be where the the 21 point line comes from. Uh looking at, you know, Michigan State's defense against the offense, I I think I think Penn State's going to be able to run the ball a little bit. They're not explosive and they won't be explosive here because Michigan State does not allow explosive runs. However, Penn State number 15 in rushing success rate. Michigan State's defense number 83. Penn State number 2 in stuff rate allowed. Uh, Michigan State number 99 in stuff rate. Offensive line yards uh, created at Penn State's number 20. Michigan State's defense number 96. Now, when you look at the last four weeks, it comes down a little bit, right? This defense for Penn State, not as good. Uh, But again, I mean, they've played Michigan, Ohio State, whatever. Uh, they just haven't been great. Uh, and that Indiana game was a, a big part of this. But still, I, I expect the offense for Penn State to be able to do a little bit, especially against, I mean, this Michigan State defense has just been atrocious against the run, even in the last four weeks. has gotten worse. Number 122 PPA per rush, number 109 rushing success rate allowed. I think that Penn State is going to use this game to kind of I'm not going to say get right, but they, they'll want to win this one, and we know that James Franklin likes to cover games like this. Uh, if you want to see the, the full stats, you can see that here. I I mean, the five factors, the first half point margin, second half point margin, it everything points towards Penn State being able to cover here. Uh, the power rating, by the way, has Penn State by about 22. It's 21.8. Last four weeks, like I said, Penn State by 24. I expect Penn State to show up. Uh, it, it's got a predicted score of about 31 to seven or so over the past four weeks. Yeah, I could I could read that. Give me give me Penn State minus the 21 here. I think they show up. I think they cover. James Franklin, keep the boosters happy uh, because you're about to have to go hire a new OC. Somebody get Sean Lewis on the line. We'll see. We will see. All right. Next one on the board. And again, I got to keep it going faster. Kentucky heads to Louisville, and the Cardinals are a six and a half point home favorite. Total is 50 and a half. This one is Saturday, 11 a.m. Central Time, God's Time Zone on ABC. And we will look at the numbers, which full season have Louisville favored by 10.21. Louisville does have the ACC championship game next week. They only have one loss on the season thus far. Their strength of schedule is number 74. Kentucky's is number 22. And it's going to be like that when you play Alabama and Tennessee and Georgia and et cetera, et cetera, right? That's that's how it goes. The full season numbers, uh, Louisville is number 11 in predicted points added margin. Kentucky is number 56. Uh, but remember, Kentucky started out hot. Like, they were 5-0, and oh, I believe, to start this season. Uh, they ain't that anymore. We'll just say that. Uh, they're going to a bowl game, but it's not been all good. Let's look at the last four weeks. Yeah, Kentucky number 91. Predicted points added margin. Louisville has actually gotten better. Uh, they are number 9 in PPA margin. Uh, the offense, surprisingly for Jeff Brom, not what's getting it done. It's the defense. Over the past four weeks, defense is number 11 in predicted points added allowed per drive. Uh, you look at this defense for Louisville, Kentucky cannot run the ball. They just There's no way they can do it. And it, you look at uh, standard down success rate, Kentucky's number 72. Louisville is number 13 on defense. 
Uh, standard downs at PPA. Uh, Kentucky is number 83. And Louisville is number 12. So Kentucky is going to be behind the chains more often than not. Have they gotten a little bit better at throwing the football? I mean, slightly. They're number 62 PPA per pass uh, over the full season. Uh, they were number 65. Passing success rate for the full season was number 86 over the last four weeks. Uh, it's number 84. Like They're number 109 in passing explosiveness. They're number 102 in havoc allowed. Uh, Louisville is number 33 in havoc created over the past four weeks. This, this ain't good for the Kentucky offense. Now, if you want to look at the Kentucky defense... Maybe, um, maybe they can find something here. Can Louisville's offense over the past four weeks is number one sixteen in stuff rate allowed. Kentucky's defense is number sixty two. Um, but you look at success rate stuff like that. Louisville finding ways to get yards uh, on the ground. Number twenty four in rushing success rate. Only number fifty nine in PPA per rush. Uh, but Kentucky's defense is number sixty in that metric. These two teams like to play pretty slow. Uh, number 131 in place per game for Kentucky. Number 110 for Louisville. And Louisville, surprisingly, not very explosive. Um, number 106 in offensive explosiveness, and they do give up you know, explosive plays. Kentucky was really explosive to start the year. They have not been as of late. They're number 92 in offensive explosiveness and, uh, and number 27 in defensive explosiveness allowed, so they're not going to allow a bunch of big plays. At this screams a Louisville cover to me. I think the number is so low because Kentucky has just beaten their brains in uh, year after year. The power rating on this has Louisville by five, a little over five, like five and a quarter. I just, I I believe that Louisville is not going to overlook this. Jeff Brom went to school there, played there. He understands the rivalry with the Wildcats. And I believe that they see an opportunity to get a win over Kentucky because it's been a little while. I know you got an ACC championship next week. You got to focus on Kentucky right now. You're at home. You ought to be able to handle these guys. You are a top 10 team. Uh, you need to get it done. So I will trust Louisville to, uh, to cover the six and a half on this one. All right, next on the board. Writer times down here, of course. Texas A&M. Travels to LSU. LSU, an 11-point home favorite, total of 66.5 on this one. It's 11 a.m. Central Time on ESPN, and the numbers uh, are a little surprising. Uh, They would have LSU by 8.38 when you're looking at the full season number. Uh, I'd have LSU 38 to uh, about 30 or so for Texas A&M. Power rating has LSU by 5. LSU... uh, it is quite obvious what they're trying to do here, right? They are trying to get Jaden Daniels a Heisman Trophy. They are number two in offensive success rate. They are number one in predicted points added per drive on offense, but they are atrocious on defense, still atrocious on defense, uh, number 131 in that regard. Uh, just surprising overall, Texas A&M number 17 in PPA margin, that defense for the full season has, I mean, they're number nine in PPA allowed per drive. Uh, number 17, PPA margin. Uh, the offense, you know, even though they're on a third-string guy, it's it's been pretty good. You look at the five factors rank, I mean, Texas A&M, like, raw numbers, they're number five. Uh, when you add in talent, which I don't know why it's dropped like that, but regardless, uh I mean, these two teams, pretty similar as far as the five factors rank, right? Here, we'll pull up pull up full thing here. So that's over the full season. Uh, but let's take a look over the last four weeks. It would have LSU by six. And again, over the last four weeks, number one in PPA per drive on offense, number 131 on defense. Still a terrible LSU defense. Uh But in this situation, it's got LSU by like 38 to 32 as opposed to 38 to 30. Texas A&M over the past four weeks, number 26 in PPA margin. The defense has still been pretty good. Uh, It's it's surprisingly good, as a matter of fact. Uh, They're not as good throwing the ball, number 78 PPA per pass. But when you're going against this secondary, I think anybody could have a a huge day. 
Uh, and Texas A&M should be able to run the ball. Number 35 PPA for Rush. LSU's defense is number 123. I think, I think, LSU is going to show out here. I don't know what else Texas A&M has to play for. Um, I mean, they, they've got their sixth win. They're going to a bowl game. Is it that much better if you get a seventh win or whatever? The, the game is in Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge, however you'd like me to say it. Uh, I know that the number is inflated a little bit, but uh, yeah, I think I'm going to take LSU to cover. I think they're going to do everything they can to get Jaden Daniels a, uh, a Heisman Trophy, and I think they want some revenge for losing on the road last year. So uh, give me LSU minus the 11 on that one. Next up on the board, hopefully this is not too long of a show. I hope I don't keep you off for too long. But if you need something to do over Thanksgiving or when you're traveling or whatever, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Indiana travels to Purdue, and Purdue is a three-point home favorite, total of 51 and a half. This game is at 11 a.m. Central Time Saturday on the Big Ten Network. And uh, the stats for the full season seem to like the Boilermakers. Purdue by 5.23, somewhere around 25 to 20. Uh, would be the predicted score on that one. Uh, power rating has Purdue favored by 4.7. Okay, that's uh, that's a little different. Indiana's defense full season has been pretty awful. Uh, Purdue, defensive numbers kind of surprisingly good. Just, yeah, kind of surprisingly good. I, that's an easy way to say that. Um, I think, I mean, obviously Ryan Walters being there, that's a, that's a big thing. Big thing, right? So, number 88 PPA margin for Purdue, number 118 for Indiana for the full season. Uh, The Indiana offense has started to look a little bit better. The offensive line is actually pretty good as far as stuff rate and offensive line yards are concerned, but number 117 in rushing success rate, number 115 PPA per rush. Uh, Purdue actually pretty good at defending the run. They're number 40 in PPA per rush allowed uh, and number 52 in rushing success rate allowed. Uh, Let's look at the last four weeks, though. Uh, because obviously, you know, no Hudson card last week. Um, I mean, you got some you got some issues going on there. Uh, it, it would like Indiana by three points just based on the last four weeks. Indiana trending in the right direction ever since they fired the offensive coordinator, Walt Bell. Offensive success rate over the past four weeks for Indiana is number 40. Uh, when you got Justin Fuente back there, yeah, I mean, he knows offense. He's going to be able to improve your offensive scheme a little bit. And that's certainly what he has done for Tom Allen's bunch. Uh, they're number 51 in predicted points added per drive on offense over the past four weeks. Uh, Purdue on defense, number 44. They've actually improved quite a bit. Number 27 in defensive success rate. Indiana's defense is still atrocious. I mean, just bad. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Net points per drive. Indiana, number 68. Uh, you've got uh, Purdue at, let's see, number 100 in that metric over the past four weeks. Indiana, a little more explosive. uh, Nothing too crazy, at least as far as net explosiveness is concerned. Indiana does not allow a lot of explosives. They don't create a ton, um, but, man, Purdue certainly gives them up. Number 102 in defensive explosiveness allowed. Uh, Points per play margin, turnover margin, penalties per game, all that leans Indiana here. Uh, I think I'm going to ride with Tom Allen in the bunch. That team is still fighting. Uh, that's not to say that Purdue is not, but, I mean, Purdue was a favorite last week and couldn't get it done, just made mistakes in some of the most critical moments in the game. I will take Indiana plus the three in this one. I'm going to trust the model on that. And we move ahead, and this time uh, we're going to the ACC. Pitt is headed to Duke, and the Blue Devils are a six-point home favorite Total of 42 on this one, 11 a.m. Central Time, God's Time Zone, on the ACC Network. Oh, and these numbers are not good for Pat Narduzzi's bunch. Full season would have Duke favored by 10.77. And, of course, you're saying, well, I mean, Riley Leonard's gone and all this. And, I mean, shouldn't, shouldn't something like that be counted in? Over the past four weeks... It would actually have Duke favored by more. Has them favored by 11. Uh, basically a 24-13 to 13 score. Somewhere around there. 
Uh, the power rating has Duke by 5.7. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that these two teams are similarly talented. Team strength by the boys at college football, uh, or CFB winning edge, excuse me, uh, has Duke uh, number 29 and at Pitt number 32 as far as team strength is concerned, right? And that, that's a metric that includes experience and talent and uh, coaching staff and whatever else, right? Just all the stuff that goes into it. Uh, so it would have Duke favored a little bit in that, but... I mean, two pretty similar teams. It's just that one of them uh, can actually score a little bit on offense. Uh, Duke, like, their defense has not been good the past however many weeks. But I don't expect them to be stressed by Pitt's offense. I mean, Pitt's offense, number 132 PPA per pass over the past four weeks. They are number 88 in PPA per rush, they only run the ball 35% of the time over the past four weeks. Pitt has found something with this new quarterback, uh, this freshman that they that they brought in. Uh, looked good against Boston College last week, but now they're going on the road. Uh, this team is number 107 in turnover margin, number 126 in penalties per game. Just Pitt does not look good. Number 132 in offensive explosiveness over the last four weeks. Uh, Duke does not allow explosives. They do create some... I mean, Duke by six. It's less than a touchdown. Duke is at home. The only thing that I could see maybe throwing a wrench in this is if Mike Oko uh, is is dealing with potentially leaving Durham, right? That's that's the only way that I could see this. But as it stands right now, I'm going to take the Blue Devils minus the six against the Pitt Panthers. Uh, part of me wonders if... Pitt is just ready to be done with the season. Just a guess. All right. Now we move along. Colorado at Utah. This one is 2 p.m. Central Time on the Pac-12 Network. Utah, a 21 and a half point home favorite. Total sits at 52 and a half. And, whew, inflated line a bit. I mean, the, the full season numbers would have Utah by... Almost 15. I mean, 14.93 would have it about 30 to 15, something like that, 31 to 16. I mean, you know, somewhere around there. Um, Colorado's defensive numbers on the season are just atrocious. They're so bad. Number 127 in predicted points added. Uh, allowed per drive, just not good. And the offense, while they're pretty good at throwing the ball, that's throwing right into the teeth of uh, Utah's defense. I mean, you you just you're not going to have a bunch of success there. Uh, one of the most disciplined teams in the country every year is Utah. They are number 42. Um, they're number eight at getting penalties from the opposing team. On the other side. Um, Colorado, one of the most undisciplined teams. Number 132 in penalties per game. Uh, as far as turnover margin, uh, surprisingly, you know, Colorado, number seven, uh, I think they'd be a lot worse if they weren't so good at taking the ball away. They take the ball away 1.82 times per game. They only give it away less than one time per game. They're actually tied with Utah in that, uh, in that metric. But regardless, let's look over the last four weeks on this. I'm going to pull up the full stats for you so you can see. Uh, this number is inflated because there's a there's a chance that Shadour Sanders does not play this week. He got dinged up pretty good against Washington State last week. I mean, they were bringing uh, everything and the kitchen sink last week, and they got to him a lot. I think he had four sacks in the first quarter. Like, it was, it was pretty bad. So there's a chance that he does not play, and you've only got freshmen behind him, so... That would not be good uh, in Salt Lake City. I, I know we have seen that already this year. I mean, Dante Moore went in there and just looked atrocious. But, uh, but yeah, over the past four weeks, Utah, not great. Number 113 in PPA margin. But this includes games against Oregon. It includes games against uh, or on the road at Arizona. Like, it, you're, you're dealing, my gosh, I mean, Utah played Washington not that long ago. So, you know, these are raw numbers. Take them with a grain of salt. The The score is opponent-adjusted. The stats are not. So, 
Uh, I don't have these things weighted. You can go and check out Parker's numbers uh, at Stats of War on Twitter uh, to see the weighted numbers. So these are just raw, raw, ridiculous numbers. Uh, Colorado was good on offense. Over the past four weeks, they have not been number 125 in offensive success rate, number 122 in PPA per drive on offense. Uh, they can't move the ball. And I know that Utah's defense has not been good, but again, look at who they have played. Colorado, on the other hand, uh, they have not played the same gauntlet that Utah has. It's just, it's not even close. I, I have to imagine that Colorado might just be kind of done with the year, and Utah probably wants to end things on a high note. There's a there's a possibility that they could return all 11 starters on their offense. Pretty wild, huh? I know we know Cam Rising's coming back next year. Uh, I, I know it's a lot of points. Yeah, I'm going to take Utah minus the 21 and a half. Uh, I think Shador Sanders is worth that much. I think this team might just fold up. That's kind of what I expect. So give me Utah minus 21 and a half. Moving on to game number 10 here, and I'm already 36 minutes into this thing. What am I doing with my life? Uh, okay, San Jose State heads to UNLV. Uh, this one's got Mountain West title implications on it. UNLV is a two-and-a-half point home favorite. Total of 58-and-a-half. It's 2 p.m. Central Time, and this is absurd that this game is on the Mountain West Network. You can go to themw.com and watch this thing for free. This should be on regular cable television somewhere. CBS Sports Network, somebody. Pick this thing up. Like, this is a hell of a game. Hell of a game. All right, looking at the numbers. Uh, over the full season, it would have UNLV favored by 2.24 here. Um, okay, that makes sense because when you look at San Jose State for the full season, you got to include the first part. And then the second part, um, they've been a lot better, right? Now, my model did this uh, in the in the past couple of weeks against Fresno State. San Jose State uh, was really close for the full season numbers, but then you look at the last four weeks, and it was the same thing. Fresno was for some reason like a double digit favorite in this game, and I could not understand it to save my life. Uh, San Jose State is number three in the country in predicted points added margin over the past four weeks. They have been dynamite. Number 11 on offense, number five on defense per drive. UNLV has played uh, some tougher competition, but uh, they keep getting it done. The The number would have them favored eh, by 7.82. There it is. Um, yeah, I. it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, right? I think what the issue is, uh, is that my, my model does take into consideration uh, plays per game and whatnot, and, you know, San Jose State does not run a bunch of plays. Number, like, six, excuse me, number 114 in offensive plays per game, um, UNLV is number 46 in offensive plays per game. Both of these teams are explosive. Points per play margin, I mean, that leans San Jose State. Turnover margin leans San Jose State. Penalties leans San Jose State. Uh, the five factors rank, when you just look at the raw numbers, uh, San Jose State is number one in the country over the past four weeks in five factors rank. Uh now, when you include talent, UNLV actually has them beat. They're number 35 to uh, to number 37. So, something you got to think about on that one. I I think Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to take San Jose State in this. They've been playing awesome. Like their points per game margin over the past 4 weeks 23.33. They have been just smoking teams. And their defense has been really good. They've only given up an average of 10.33 over the past four weeks. Uh, the offense is good. The defense is good. I This is going to be a hell of a matchup. Just a hell of a matchup. I can't wait to see Brennan Marion's go-go offense against this defense. Just can't wait. So, I'll take it. Uh, San Jose State. I know they're on the road. I know that this is a big-time spot. But San Jose State has been playing 
absolute dynamite football. UNLV has gone through a gauntlet. They might think they can let up here. You cannot. You cannot. San Jose State plus the two and a half on that. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me tell you right quick about one of our partners. We know that you want to buy some concert tickets. Okay. Pantera is coming to Memphis in February. There's a bunch of other concerts that are going on next year that you're going to want to go see. There are a ton of games, a ton of bowl games, rivalry games this weekend, right? Alabama-Auburn, the game, Ohio State-Michigan. Even something, you know, if you're in Arizona, you probably care about Arizona and Arizona State, right? These tickets can get kind of expensive. Here is how you are going to save money buying tickets to whatever kind of event you want to go to. You go to TicketSmarter.com or the TicketSmarter app, and you put in the promo codes, right? WCE10, it's going to get you 10 bucks off an order of $100 or more. WCE20, you see it on the screen here, is going to get you $20 off an order of $300 or more. So the super expensive tickets, you just go on and tack off a little money on that, and you can use this every single time you go to the site. It is not a one-time sign-up thing, whatever. That's the promo code. Put in the promo code WCE10 or WCE20. It's going to save you money. And that is how you make it through Christmas, right? (laughs) Because I'm about to spend so much money on these kids for Christmas. I got three kids. What am I doing with my life? Uh, Regardless, regardless about that, save your money at Ticket Smarter, buying all your tickets and whatnot. Trans-Siberian Orchestra is coming uh, coming to town for me here in about three weeks. I'm kind of interested. Tickets look kind of expensive. They're really not when you use the promo code. So take advantage. WCE10 or WCE20. Think smarter. Ticket smarter. Moving along. And, uh, oh, like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. I, we, I would certainly appreciate that. I say we all the time. Uh, and I guess you can count, you know, my wife is a part of the team here. Uh, but it, this is my show. I'm a one-man show, and I would appreciate it if you would like the video and subscribe and support in any way you would like to, whether it's buying a shirt or uh, becoming a member here or uh, doing the buy me a coffee thing, however you want to do it. Uh, If you just want to reach out and say, hey, what's up, man? You can do that on Twitter, at Winning Cures. All right. I brought up Arizona and Arizona State. So let's write the time down and, uh, and actually discuss that game. Boop, boop. Arizona heads to Arizona State. Arizona State, a 10.5 point home dog, a total of 50 on this one. Uh, it is at 2.30 p.m. Central Time, God's Time Zone, on ESPN. And, of course, we got to look at the numbers. Arizona has been playing phenomenal football. Phenomenal football. Uh, they had a little trouble with Colorado. Last week against Utah, they smoked them. Smoked them. Uh, the game at Colorado, uh, that was a little weird one. It was coming off of a, a few big games. And this one is coming off of some big games, but this is a rivalry game. And Jed Fish understands exactly how important this game is for his recruiting efforts and whatnot in that state, along with everything else, right? So big-time spot here. Uh, Full-season stats would have Arizona favor by 11.5. Uh, you're looking at the number 20 team in predicted points added margin against Arizona State, who is number 115. That ain't good. But you have seen so many different iterations of this Arizona State team that what numbers can you really trust here, right? Uh, Let's look at the last four weeks. And I'll go and pull this up like so. It's got Arizona by 15.66. Basically, somewhere around 28.5 to 13. And no, I, I, I understand that you cannot score a half point. I get that. Regardless, we're just we're looking over in metrics. We're looking over numbers, advanced stats, whatever. Power rating would have uh, Arizona favored by about 12 and a half. In this one, uh, 28 and a half to 13. Yeah, that sounds about right to me. Uh, this was 11 and a half, and it's come down to 10 and a half. Uh, the Arizona defense is actually pretty good. Arizona State has found a little bit of success running the ball. Uh, They've been somewhat explosive throwing the ball, but they're not consistent with it. They're number 128 in passing success rate over the past four weeks, number 123 in PPA per pass. Well, Arizona's defense is number 30 
in PPA allowed per pass, and number 42 in passing success rate allowed. Um, and as far as, like, stopping the run, Arizona's defense is actually pretty good at that, too. Uh, number 55 PPA per rush over the past four weeks. On offense, I mean, I don't know that Arizona State's going to be able to stop these guys. I got, I don't have any faith at all in a Kenny Dillingham coach team at, at, at stopping a team like this. Arizona is super explosive over the past four weeks. Number 28 in offensive explosiveness, number 32 in defensive explosiveness allowed. So they're number 19 in net explosiveness. Arizona State is number 87. I, I'm going to ride with Arizona again. And I know that there's people that buying off of the spot and whatnot, but Arizona not only wants to win this for recruiting reasons, et cetera, uh, they also want to make sure that they, you know, handle this one pretty easily because there is a possibility that they might be in the Pac-12 title game. Now, we'll already know by this point because Oregon and Oregon State are playing on Friday night. But if Oregon State finds a way to uh, to win that game, Arizona's going to be playing for a berth in the Pac-12 title game. It's kind of big. Kind of a big deal. So give me uh, give me Arizona minus the 10.5. I don't understand the love for Arizona State. Uh, I get it long term. I don't get it in this game. I don't think this is a good matchup for them. All right. We move to the Big Ten. Wisconsin heads to Minnesota. Minnesota, a two and a half point home dog. Total of 42 on this one. And uh, it's at 2.30 p.m. Central Time on FS1. Let's uh, let's pull up some numbers. Let's take a look and see if it'll ever switch over. Full season would have Wisconsin favored by 9.1. Excuse me for the coughing. <laughs> Uh, Minnesota on the season, number 122 PPA margin. Wisconsin, number 58. Uh, I always like to look at these kind of things. The fundamental stuff, it can it can sway a game. Turnover margin, Minnesota's number 31. Wisconsin, number 74. Penalties per game, Minnesota is number two. I mean, that is a disciplined, well-coached team. Uh, only commit an average of three penalties per game. Wisconsin is number 57. So they're middle of the pack, somewhere around there, but 2.7 more penalties per per game than Minnesota does. That's that's wild. Absolutely wild. Uh, Minnesota, number six in offensive red zone conversion percentage. But on defense, they're number 132 allowed. This defense has been just ugh this year. Number 91 PPA per pass allowed. Number 99 PPA per rush. The defense has not been there. Uh, and obviously, a lot of players have changed over and whatnot. Let's look at the last four weeks. Because that's a, a better indicator of what this Wisconsin team has become. Wisconsin number 96 PPA margin over the past four weeks. Minnesota still down there around number 118. Uh, so that's not good. The strength of schedule, significantly different here. Wisconsin number 73 and Minnesota number 14. I find that interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know why that's... I, you, I'm sure you can tell if you're listening to this that I am very perplexed at that. Uh, I don't know why I didn't see that before because I've already looked at these uh, a little bit just to see. Um, and again, on these, I'm not looking for like a bunch of trends and, and whatever else. Mostly, I'm just trying to break down stats for these games, figure out where the mismatches are. Uh, but whew, that's uh, that's different. So, uh, regardless, this Wisconsin offense, number 102 PPA per drive, uh, over the past four weeks. But the defense, you know, it's it's gotten worse, but they're still number 82. The defense for Minnesota has been atrocious. Number 113 uh, over the past four weeks. Just not great uh, whatsoever. I Minnesota has kind of made it a habit of getting up for this game and, and trying to embarrass Wisconsin. And they've done a pretty good job of it. But I think that this is one of those things that Luke Fickle was hired to come in and fix. Uh, they got the win over Nebraska last week. That's all well and good, whatever. Uh, they need to beat Minnesota, and I think that they will. Now, uh, over the past four weeks, it's about four points better or so, so 21-17, to 17, something like that, uh, is what the score would look like, uh, at least according to the last four-week stats. 
I think that makes sense. Like, I think that Wisconsin really wants to win this game. Uh, so I'm going to take them to do that. Uh, Wisconsin minus the two and a half for me, you know, 2.30 p.m. Central Time on FS1. Uh, I like the Badgers here. I think they can get this thing done. We go to the ACC. Virginia Tech heads to Virginia. Uh, Virginia, a three-point home dog, total of 51 and a half on this. It's 2.30 p.m. Central Time on the ACC Network. And let's see about some numbers, huh? Full season would have Virginia Tech by 3.18, so pretty even with the spread. Now, my power rating would have Virginia Tech by 4.57, so a slight edge to Virginia Tech on this. As far as the five factors rank, heavy, heavy edge for the full season to Virginia Tech. Number 44 in five factors plus talent. Virginia is number 109. This Virginia team is kind of feisty, though. Uh, You look at the offensive numbers, number 55 in PPA per pass, number 84 PPA per rush, but they've gone through a couple of different quarterbacks, several different quarterbacks, really. Uh, They've found ways to show up in some pretty big spots. I think, you know, Tony Elliott's going to be around again next year. He ain't going anywhere. Uh, He's shown that he's actually pretty good at motivating kids, which I don't know that I saw that coming. Um, But regardless, I mean, they've been through a lot. Been through a lot. I wonder how much is left in the tank for Virginia. Uh, Virginia Tech, you know, fighting for a bowl slot, all that kind of stuff. Very curious here. Uh, These are the last four weeks numbers, and they have Virginia Tech by 4.23. So somewhere around 23 to 19 ish uh this spread right now sitting at three uh pretty much across the board i mean that is the consensus line uh basically every book um because i'm I'm looking at bet stamp and i'm looking at spank odds and whatnot i got them both pulled up uh yeah i mean this thing across the board virginia tech at three uh really interesting because i think virginia tech is the significantly better team but i know virginia is feisty Rivalry game at home. You got a home dog. Uh, I gotta, I gotta go with the Hokies though, right? Like Virginia Tech, just the defensive success and the defensive difference alone uh, would lead me towards Virginia Tech here. Uh, I, I think, you know, Virginia Tech can run the ball. Virginia is number ninety-two in PPA per rush allowed. Virginia Tech is number eleven over the past four weeks number 14 in rushing success rate for the Hokies, number 111 uh, for the for the Hoos. I, yeah, there's there's a lot that leads me to Virginia Tech here. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, give me give me Brent Pry minus the three for Virginia Tech. I, I like this team. Uh, I think they're headed down the right path here. That's what I think. We go... To the Pac-12. Washington State heads to Washington in the Apple Cup. And Washington, a 16-and-a-half point home favorite. Total of 68 on this one. Uh, 3 p.m. Central Time on Fox for this one. And the numbers, I think, will surprise you. Over the full season, it would have Washington favored by 19 in this. Now, that would be somewhere around 39 to 20. Makes sense, I think. Um, I mean, you start looking at crazy th- available yards margin. Uh, you look at net points per drive. You know, explosiveness, all this kind of stuff. And it certainly looks like Washington would be a heavy, heavy favorite here, right? Uh, the five factors rank and whatnot, that's all... That's big. But there are certain things that I like to look for, which I mentioned in this last thing. Turnover margin, uh, which Washington State is terrible at. Uh, But then there's also penalties per game. Washington commits an average of eight penalties per game. Uh, Washington State's number 57 in that metric. You start looking at points per scoring opportunity. Uh, Washington State's offense has been pretty good at that. Uh, Washington's offense is good at that. Washington State's defense can't stop anybody from uh, from scoring when they get inside the opponent 40. But that's for the full season. 
What's up with the last four? Let's pull up the full numbers. That way you can see a little more of the screen. If I blew it up, what would that look like? Okay, that looks all right. It would have Washington by about 10. 9.95. Uh, 29 to 19, somewhere around there. That makes sense to me. It makes all the sense in the world, right? Because Washington State has shown signs of life where it didn't look like they were going to earlier in the year, and especially last week against Colorado. I mean, they absolutely lit up that offense. Now, I think Washington has a better offensive line than Colorado did, but I mean, it ain't that much better. Uh, and over the past four weeks, which is what these numbers are, Washington State, number 25 in offensive success rate, number 39 in defensive success rate allowed. Uh, Washington's defense, number 125. Now, Washington has played a, a more difficult schedule over the past few weeks. But there's something to that as well, right? I know that they're going into a rivalry game, but this is a pretty huge sandwich spot. Last week was kind of the test that they needed to get over when they went to Corvallis. Uh, they got past that one. And, yeah, you got a rivalry game this week, but next week is the Pac-12 championship game. You want to make it to the playoff, you got to win, you know, that game next week. I, I'm curious here. Uh, PPA per rush. Predicted points added per rush. This is what Washington is the worst at. Number 131. Predicted points added per rush. Washington State is number 86 in that. However... Washington's defense is number 133 in rushing success rate allowed. Washington State's offense is number 6 in rushing success. Uh, Washington State can throw the ball, too. Number 20 in passing success rate on offense over the past four weeks. And Washington's defense is number 76. There are some holes in that Washington defense. I think that Cam Ward can take advantage of those. Uh, So, are they going to win the game? Probably not. But 16 and a half feels like way too many points in this game when you know that Washington uh, has been through it for one and for two, they got a game coming up next week, probably against Oregon. Uh, I'm going to take Wazoo. Give me, give me the Cougars plus the 16 and a half. I like Washington State here. I mean, this is uh, the last of the Pac-12 versions of the Apple Cup. I think that they're going to show up here. I know it's in Seattle. Don't care. Don't care. I think Washington has bigger fish to fry. They don't need to run up a score here. Uh, I expect them to, uh, I I expect the Cougars to show up big time in this one. All right. Game number 15. Notre Dame heads to Palo Alto. They're going to take on Stanford. And Notre Dame is a 25 and a half point road favorite with a total of 51 and a half. It's at 6 p.m. Central Time on. Nice parting shot here from Larry Scott, the Pac-12 Network. So most of you are probably not going to be able to watch this uh, this game unless you decide to log into one of those websites, and you guys know what I'm talking about. Looking at the numbers, 34.29 over the full season is what Notre Dame would be favored by using the stats model. Power rating has got Notre Dame by 31. Uh, Stanford is interesting. Because they've got some things that you like. I like what Troy Taylor's doing. Um, I don't think they are there yet. Notre Dame is trying to show out. They're trying to get to a New Year's Six Bowl. They do still have the ability to get there, which is a bit surprising. Um, Even with three losses, they can do this. They are number six in the country in predicted points added margin. Uh, Stanford is number 131. I mean, this looks kind of like the uh, the Toledo and Central Michigan uh, numbers, except that Notre Dame is significantly better. It's the way it goes. Notre Dame, uh, way fewer plays per game. Stanford uh, likes to run a lot of plays. When you are trying to run tempo as the less talented team or the worst team, uh, that can lead to some pretty big margins because you're... It, Typically, you're going to make more mistakes, right? Uh, This Stanford defense is just as bad as uh, the Stanford rushing offense. Number 117 PPA per rush on offense for Stanford. Uh, Notre Dame's defense is number 29 in that metric. On the other side, 
Uh, Stanford number 126 in PPA allowed per pass. That's predicted points added allowed per pass. Notre Dame's offense is number 17. Uh, this is a pretty balanced offense for the Irish. Uh, and I know there's a lot of people that want to complain about this team and whatnot and what they've become, but uh, hey, I think they're all right. Let's look over the last four weeks, though. Those are the numbers that really matter. What's the trending stuff? Well, the trending stuff here would show you that dun, 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 uh, Notre Dame would be favored by 37. It's a lot of points. <laughs> it's a whole lot of points. Uh, over the past four weeks, Notre Dame's defense is number one in PPA allowed per pass. They are number 17 in PPA allowed per rush. Stanford on defense. Uh, this Notre Dame offense is not as good over the past four weeks as they have been over the full season, but that's okay because Stanford is atrocious on defense. They are so bad. Uh, the rushing numbers for Stanford's defense look a little bit better. They're number 49 at PPA allowed per rush, but they're number 106 in rushing success rate allowed. Uh, I mean, that ain't that ain't good. That's just not good. The five factors rank way off here. Uh, number 12 for Notre Dame, number 121 for uh, for Stanford. I mean, this is, I think Notre Dame wants to go out and put on a show and, and look good uh, for recruiting, for New Year's Six possibilities, for a lot of different things here. And, uh, and with that being the case, uh, I think you guys know what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take the Irish. Um. Yeah, I think that's probably the smart play. I know a lot of people don't like laying big numbers. If the model tells me to do it, typically typically I'm going to do it. So Notre Dame minus the 25 and a half on that. Uh, again, we've got five more games. If you have not already, like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Of course, uh, share it out. Tell your friends about it. I would certainly appreciate that. If you can't watch it on YouTube, you can always go grab the podcast as well. Uh, I would appreciate that too. All right, moving on to the Big 12. West Virginia heads to Baylor, and uh, the number currently is Baylor as an 8.5-point home dog, 55.5 for the total, 6 p.m. Central Time on FS1. And uh, look, these numbers are going to be a little bit off because Blake Shapin is uh, apparently not in a good position to play, from what I understand. Um, at least that's what Dave Aranda was talking about, uh, concussion protocol, et cetera. I think there's a massive drop-off from Blake Shapin to the guys that they have behind him. Uh, just not good at all. I think it's Sawyer Robertson, maybe something like that. So certainly, uh, certainly a big drop uh, for Baylor's quarterbacks here. So we look at the full season numbers, and I mean, my God. Dave Aranda. I, I'm, I'm assuming either you're going to be gone or some of the guys on your staff are going to be gone uh, because there is no reason on earth why over a full course of a season, a Dave Aranda defense should be number 130 in predicted points added allowed per drive. I mean, that's bad. That is. And let's Let's scroll down and let's take a look at this. Number 132 in PPA allowed per pass. Number 126 in passing success rate allowed. Number 115, PPA allowed per rush. And number 95 in rushing success rate. They are number 122 in rushing explosiveness allowed. I mean, this is just insane. Uh, So over the course of the full season, it would have West Virginia favored by... Uh, thirty to twenty four, somewhere around there. Like five point nine is is the uh, the number here. Uh, power rating has West Virginia by four point seven, but that doesn't include the injury, right? Let's look over the last four weeks. West Virginia plus ten point seven four. I mean, sorry, minus ten point seven four. That that's without the injury being taken into consideration. Baylor is number 123 PPA margin. They can't score on offense, and they can't stop anybody on defense. And this West Virginia team over the past four weeks, number four in the country 
in predicted points added per rush. They are just lighting people up. Number 14 in offensive line yards. Number 20 in rushing explosiveness. I mean, this team, like this is this is wild. Uh, and you start to look at the five factors rank, et cetera. I mean, there's no reason why this line should be under 10 points. Uh, it got out to 9.5 this morning. Uh, it came back down to 8.5 now. I don't know why there's the buyback here. Like, why Why are you buying back on Baylor? Even if Shapin plays, it's not like that defense is going to be able to stop anybody. I mean, that this is... This is banana land. Like, <laughs> that's... I don't understand it. Baylor, uh... Look, I am I feel pretty confident that they're going to give Aranda one more year, but man, there ain't no number on here that would justify it. I'll say that. And I don't I don't look for guys to be fired, but whew. I mean that this thing's been run into the ground this year. I don't know what has happened there. We can blame it on injuries and whatever else, but West Virginia figured it out. I mean, my gosh. Like unbelievable. All right, uh, so yeah, give me give me West Virginia minus the eight and a half on that one. We got four more to go, and if you have sat through this with me all the way, I appreciate you. I just want you to know that uh, because look, it's after midnight. It's almost one o'clock in the morning. I still got to finish up some bet U.S. stuff. I'm doing this on Tuesday, so I can have it out on Wednesday because I'm going to be on the road, going to man laws and whatnot. It's just football season is chaotic. It really is. I've been doing this for seven years, doing all the content and all that kind of stuff, and it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. I love it, though. I really do. I don't necessarily love uh, all of it all the time, but by God, I enjoy the community. So, Georgia heads to Georgia Tech. They're headed to Atlanta. Are they going to red out Georgia Tech Stadium? Bobby Dodd Stadium. What in the world? Oh, can't believe it. Can't believe it. Uh, Georgia Tech is a 24.5-point home dog here. Total of 60.5. It's at 6.30 p.m. Central Time on ABC. Why you would have a game with a 24.5-point spread on ABC, I have no idea. I got the wrong numbers up here. There we go. Full season. Here, let's do that. (laughs) For the full season, Georgia... A 28.62 point favorite. That's interesting to me uh, because the Georgia defense has not been quite as good this year, right? I think that's the the, the biggest thing here. Um, pull it back that way. I had to cough earlier. Sorry. Uh, Georgia, look, number four in PPA margin on the full season, number 17 in PPA allowed per drive on defense. And there's some things that Georgia Tech could do, uh, you know, namely rushing the ball. I mean, they're number six in PPA per rush on offense. They're number 30 in rushing success rate, number 15 in rushing, rushing explosiveness. I mean, it, this is a a good Georgia Tech offense. They're number 14 in stuff rate allowed. They're number six in offensive line yards. They, they might be able to do something against this Georgia line. I'm a, I'm a little shocked at it. On the other side, however, I mean Georgia's offense. The Bulldogs are going to be able to do what they want to here. Uh, Georgia is number 15 in PPA per rush on the season. Georgia Tech is number 111. I mean that's if they want to run the ball, they're going to be able to run the ball. Teams are running the ball over 57 percent of their offensive snaps against uh, against Georgia Tech. Uh, there's not a lot that would favor Georgia Tech here, right? Five factors, talent, um, any of these numbers, turnovers, penalties per game, like none of this, none of it leans Georgia Tech. Over the past four weeks, though, again, that offense, pretty good at running the ball, number eight over the past four weeks. Well, Georgia's defense, number 127, uh, you saw the explosive run to start off the Tennessee game. Now, they didn't give up much to Tennessee after that, but regardless, this is another kind of situational spot, right? Uh, let's pull up the full screen. Maybe you guys can take a look at that. Uh, over the full 
season, that's one thing. But over the past four weeks, uh, Georgia and Georgia Tech both uh, looking a little bit better, right? This Georgia Tech team isn't great by any stretch of the imagination, but by God, they fight when they are an underdog. Like, Brent Key has done a fantastic job with this team thus far. The power rating on this would have Georgia Tech, uh, you know, as a 28-point dog. Over the past four weeks, it would have Georgia by about 25, you know, 24.95 here. I mean, I got to tell you, I think the situational spot, like Georgia just went to Knoxville and destroyed Tennessee. They've got Alabama coming up next week. Georgia Tech is already bowl eligible, but you have a chance to do something against your rival. Uh, I don't know when they're going to be able to beat Georgia, but I think they can hang in this game because they they hung around for a little bit last year. Like, I, it, clean old-fashioned hate, I, I think we're going to be able to see something interesting. Uh, Georgia Tech's defense is not good. Again, I told you that. Georgia should be able to run all over them, and if that is the case, if Georgia just decides to run the ball, um, I mean, Georgia's number 87 in plays per game. The fewer plays, the less points, the less room for margin, because I expect Georgia Tech to break off something. Uh, give me Georgia Tech plus the 24 and a half. Yeah, rambling wreck. Let's do this thing, Brent Key. Let's do this. All right, next one up. Clemson heads to South Carolina. It's the Palmetto State, right? You guys tell me in the comments. Uh, South Carolina, a seven-point home dog here with a total of 52. And uh, it's at 6.30 p.m. Central Time on the SEC Network. So... Let's pull up our numbers, and let's take a look here. Full season would have Clemson favored by 11.37. Uh, the Tigers are back into the college football playoff top 25 uh, this week. You know, I I get it. Defense is really good, at least full season. Number 10 in the country in PPA allowed per drive. They're number one against the pass, which is the one thing that South Carolina apparently does well. Number 38 PPA per pass on the season for South Carolina's offense. Clemson's defense is number one. Um, Here's the thing, though. Like, the numbers aren't just based on the full season stats. And, again, you start to look at some crazy stuff here about, like, offensive red zone conversion percentage. Clemson is number 123 in the country, 72.73%. Turnovers. I mean, Clemson number 114 in giveaways per game. They they did it against North Carolina as well. They still found a way to cover that one. Uh, but South Carolina does not turn the ball over. They're number 20 in giveaways per game. South Carolina number 24 in turnover margin. Uh, Clemson number 46. South Carolina, a lot of penalties, a lot of issues, whatever. Clemson does not commit penalties. But South Carolina, net explosiveness number 22. And Clemson number 127 over here. So... That's something to pay attention to. Look for big plays and whatnot. Let's uh let's pull up the full thing and let's look at the last four weeks here. Over the past four weeks, uh, the stats would have Clemson as a little less than a point favorite, a little less than half of a point favorite, point three four. It would have Clemson winning this game twenty three point six seven to twenty three point three three. That's surprising to me. Uh, this Clemson defense still really good. Number one in defensive success rate allowed, uh, but they're still number 72 in offensive success rate. Uh, let's scroll down and take a look here. I'm going to yep, zoom that in just a touch. Clemson's offense is number 113 PPA per pass over the past four weeks. Uh, South Carolina's defense is number 27 in that metric. Clemson's offense, number 53 PPA per rush, number 82 rushing success rate. South Carolina's defense, number 46 and number 52. The defense has started to step up a little bit for South Carolina. Uh, The five factors rank over the past four weeks, down here towards the bottom, uh, you would see that, I mean, these two teams are not that far apart. Clemson, number 19. South Carolina, number 39. Uh, you, You still need a little help if you are, my gosh, 
Clemson just not explosive whatsoever. Number 131 in offensive explosiveness, number 133 in defensive explosiveness allowed. So they allow big plays, and they don't create them. They're number 133 in net explosiveness over the past four weeks. South Carolina, on the other hand, number 21 in net explosiveness. I mean, that is a huge, huge difference. Uh, if South Carolina is going to be able to stay in this ballgame, they're going to have to hit some explosives. And I would imagine, I mean, look at this, 133 in rushing explosiveness allowed. Uh, South Carolina's number 77. Yeah, see, passing, it, it, some of these numbers don't make sense to me. Uh, but, hey, it is what it is. Uh, South Carolina, I think, can be really explosive. Uh, they, I, I think that they will be explosive against this Clemson defense. Uh, that seems to be the one weakness. And if you start to look at it, yeah, I think it's too many points. I'm going to take Shane Beamer. Uh, plus the seven on this. South Carolina plus seven here. Clemson is a better team. I don't think that is uh, being disputed. But South Carolina number 17 in PPA margin over the past four weeks. They are trending in the right direction towards the end of the season. They would love nothing more than to knock Clemson back out of the rankings again. Give them a fifth loss on the season. Uh, power rating has Clemson by like 13. But I'll still take South Carolina plus the seven at home. I think they're going to be fired up. Uh, that place is going to be jumping. Absolutely jumping. All right. Next on the board, moving to the ACC for this one. We got another rivalry game. North Carolina heads to Raleigh. Carter Finley Stadium take on NC State and the Wolfpack are a two and a half point home dog. Total of 55. It's at 7 p.m. Central Time on the ACC network. And let me pull up the numbers. On the full season, North Carolina would be favored by 5.17 here. Uh, number 27 in PPA margin. NC State is number 54. That NC State offense. I mean, my God almighty. That's so bad. Number 105 PPA per drive on the full season. Number 103 in offensive success rate. And North Carolina's offense, I mean, obviously it can get up and go. Number eight in PPA uh, per drive on offense. Now, again, this is full season. But they're going up against NC State's defense, which is pretty good. Uh, pretty good stop in the run. Number 28 PPA per rush allowed. And North Carolina's offense, number eight, uh, Omarion Hampton, I believe, is the guy. He's uh, he's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. But, I mean, Drake May's pretty good, too, and they're number 34 in PPA per pass. Uh, for the full season, they've been throwing the ball significantly more, but these numbers don't matter, right? These numbers do not matter uh, in the slightest because we want to see what the teams have been doing as of late. And as of late, this is what we're looking at. NC State favored by 1.67. NC State is at home here. The North Carolina defense has actually gotten worse throughout the season. They are number 112. This NC State offense is doing slightly better. Not great by any stretch of the imagination, but regardless. Number 124 in offensive success rate. That's not good. Uh, but they are number 46 in PPA per pass over the past four weeks. Uh, they are number 118 PPA per rush. They like to run it a lot, but they're not good at it. 132 in rushing success rate. I mean, that's just, ugh. But if you were ever going to have success with an offense, it might be against this North Carolina defense, who is number 116 PPA allowed per pass, number 104 PPA allowed per rush. On the other side, again, this North Carolina offense is better at running the ball, and yet they do it less. And that doesn't make sense to me, uh, especially when they're going to have an advantage here on the NC State defense, who is number 65 PPA allowed per rush over the past four weeks. Um, North Carolina doesn't turn the ball over. They're pretty good at, at generating turnovers as well. Uh, number 10 in takeaways per game, number 20 in giveaways per game. Um NC State is number 10 in takeaways per game, number 48 in giveaways per game. Um, NC State, more explosive, number 5 in net explosiveness. Uh, North Carolina, number 33 in that metric. And, you know, you come down here and you look at the five factors and whatnot. Five factors plus talent. NC State, number 25. North Carolina, number 27. You, you give me that 
along with the fact that NC State is at home. And, yeah. Uh, North Carolina likes to run a bunch of plays. NC State wants to slow it down. Less of a rhythm, maybe, for North Carolina. North Carolina coming off of a loss at Clemson. They're probably beat up a little bit. NC State turning in the right direction. This win would give NC State their ninth win of the year, which I don't think anybody expected that with the way that things started out uh, and as bad as the offense has been. But they are figuring out how to win even with that offense. So uh, give me NC State plus the two and a half. I think they uh, I think they knock off Mac Brown. They knock off North Carolina. Uh, find a way to get to that ninth win. NC State with nine wins. I had them over six and a half. That hit a couple games ago. A couple games ago. So, NC State plus two and a half. Last game on the board. We move to the Pac-12. Cal is going to face off in the Rose Bowl against UCLA for the last time, at least as Pac-12 members, right? Cal headed off to the ACC. UCLA headed off to the Big Ten. It's 9.30 p.m. Central Time on ESPN. UCLA a nine and a half point home favorite. Total of 52 on this one. And, of course, we look at the numbers. Full season would have UCLA favored by 16.57 on this one. Um, Just the Cal defense has been atrocious. Just so bad. Number 101, defensive PPA allowed per drive. Number 107, PPA per pass allowed. Number 66, PPA per rush, but they are number 116 in rushing success rate allowed, so that's not good. Uh, UCLA, best thing they do is run the ball, Uh, and yet it's pretty balanced. Uh, They try and throw it half and half, at least for the full season. But the UCLA defense is just, I mean, they're fantastic. They're so good. Uh, Number seven in PPA per rush allowed, number 30 in PPA per pass allowed. Uh, Cal's offense can't throw the ball, but by God, Jay Knott, he can run the ball. Number 36 in rushing success rate. Of course, UCLA's defense is number 27. Uh, that defensive line, that front seven for UCLA, number eight in offensive line yards allowed, number three in stuff rate. Cal, pretty good. Number 10 in offensive line yards, number 12 in stuff rate allowed. Uh, but again, this is for the full season. So let's see about the trends. How has this changed? And this would be how it's changed. UCLA by 10 and a half, uh, 27 to 16 and a half, somewhere around there. Projected total of 44 on this. Uh, I think it probably, eh, total of 52. We'll see. We'll see. I think I think UCLA is going to be able to score on this defense. Now, the Cal defense has improved, uh, especially against the run, right? Uh, UCLA running the ball a little bit more, uh, 50 about 50-30% of the time uh, they're running the ball. And they're number 74 in PPA per rush, number 68 in rushing success rate. Uh, Cal is number 22 in PPA allowed per rush. Uh, so uh, there's there's some things that Cal can do on defense that will be uh, a little bit better than what they've been doing. This UCLA defense, not as good as they had been. They're number 41 um, in PPA allowed per drive on defense. So not as good as they had been for the full season, but still pretty good. As you can see down here, there's more green than there is red. Uh, Teams are throwing on UCLA a lot, and that's because they're better against the run than they are against the pass. They're number 18 PPA per rush, uh, number 76 in rushing success rate. Cal, number 80 in rushing success rate over the past four weeks, number 34 in PPA per rush. Uh, but they're also number 53 in PPA per pass. Since they moved to uh, Fernando Mendoza, and I believe that's the kid's name, or Menende- uh, Menendez. Nope, I might have that wrong too. My God, I should know this. And this is bad radio, but I'm going to pull it up right here. Let's see what Cal's uh, Mendoza. There we go. All right, Fernando Mendoza threw for 294 yards and three touchdowns against uh, Stanford last week. Uh, so... <sighs> Let's see. Cal really bad as far as red zone uh, conversion percentage on offense and on defense. UCLA really bad on offense, but uh, hey, I mean, better as far as defense is concerned. Uh, Cal, if, if they can keep from giving the ball away, I think they'll be in good shape here. 
but they are number 125 in giveaways per game. They give it away two times a game. But UCLA does the same thing, 1.64 giveaways per game. That's number 95 in the country. Both teams are tied at number 10 in takeaways per game, 1.91. So nearly two takeaways per game uh, for these two teams. At, look, Cal number 39 in net explosiveness. Uh, UCLA is number 61. Uh, there's way uh, The situational spot here is very interesting because UCLA coming off of a big-time win over USC. Uh, Cal, of course, got the win over Stanford, but Cal is still fighting to make a bowl game. UCLA... A lot of weird stuff going on. A lot of the vibes are weird with the Chip Kelly stuff, like the media out there trying to get him fired and whatnot. Um, I don't like the fact that this thing is under 10, and my numbers all say to take UCLA. I mean, the power rating has got UCLA by about 12 and a half. The last four weeks has got UCLA by 10 and a half. Uh, the full season by over 16. And yet, I think situationally, it fares better for Cal to show up here. Uh, I'm going to take Cal plus the nine and a half. Um, yeah, I just, I, this is more of a feel thing than anything else. I just think that they are going to show up here. So give me Cal plus the nine and a half on that. Uh, before we do the recap, if you haven't already, like the video, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the podcast. Tell your friends about it. All that good stuff. Share it out. You guys know what to do. Y'all know what to do. If you want to support the show, become a member. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash winning cures. Uh, all that stuff. All right. Let's do a very quick recap. For those of you that don't want to sit through the whole thing, I understand we went an hour and a half tonight. Let's do it. I'm taking Boston College plus the eight and a half against Miami. Central Michigan plus ten and a half against Toledo. Arkansas plus eight against Missouri. Uh, I like Penn State minus 21 at Ford Field against Michigan State. Give me Louisville minus six and a half against Kentucky. LSU minus 11. They're trying to get Jaden Daniels, that Heisman. Uh, Indiana plus three on the road at Purdue. Duke minus six at home against Pitt. Utah minus 21 and a half against Colorado. Uh, San Jose State plus two and a half on the road at UNLV. Give me Arizona minus 10 and a half. Uh, against Arizona State, Wisconsin minus two and a half against Minnesota. Give me Virginia Tech laying three against Virginia. Uh, Washington State plus 16 and a half in the Apple Cup against Washington. Uh, Notre Dame to cover 25 and a half against Stanford. West Virginia minus eight and a half against uh, a potentially Blake Shapenless Baylor team. Georgia Tech plus 24 and a half against the Bulldogs of Georgia. South Carolina plus seven against Clemson. NC State plus two and a half against North Carolina. And I'm going to take Cal plus nine and a half. Don't forget about Ticket Smarter. Don't forget about the BetUS College Football Show. Three Dog Thursday, all that wonderful stuff. You guys are fantastic. I appreciate all of you. It's after 1 a.m. in my place on Tuesday night. I appreciate you guys for sitting around with me. Uh, This has been a lot of fun. It's been a good season, a fun season, a very interesting season. Um, Curious to see what championship week and bowl season is going to look like this year. So, we'll see what happens. Uh, Yes, the Bet U.S. College Football Show, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Subscribe there. Uh, With that said, uh, as far as Thanksgiving goes, I am thankful for you guys. I'm thankful for football, for sure. Thankful for my wife and kids, of course, obviously. I uh, got a good family, and I am very appreciative of them. But uh, but I appreciate you guys. You know, this has been a fun year. I enjoy doing this every year. I love you all. Hopefully, uh, you have enjoyed the content so far this year. We're not done yet, obviously, but it is Thanksgiving, and we're getting ready to get into the holiday season. So, with that said, let's uh, let's get out of here. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. God bless college football, and uh, hopefully all of your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me, Gary, at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.